Hello, and welcome to the introductory video for my 44 plus 1 homebrew campaign, Lorania at War. In this video, I'll be introducing the world where the campaign takes place, as well as the most important locations within. With that out of the way, let's begin. The Nabaskar universe has been, since its inception, a universe of dueling evils. The Blood War had become the primary focus of both the Devils and the Demons for as long as it had been waged, with every plane they touched being roped into it. The Celestials largely focused on the war as well, constantly supplying both sides with resources to continue the war. Nearly every plane of consistence, sans the material plane, had become either a battlefield or a safe zone used to support the war effort. The material plane would have been turned to a battlefield itself, if it hadn't been for the existence of a massive metal tower of unknown composition. Believed to have been created by the Celestials, this tower, known as the Material Anchor, acted as the Material Plane's primary defense against large-scale Fiendish incursion. That is, until the year 804, when the Anchor spontaneously and mysteriously collapsed. Within hours, massive rifts began to appear in the area around the destroyed anchor. The blood war had spread. Now the kingdoms that remain struggle to set aside their differences as the apocalypse looms overhead. Only a trio of fortified strongholds stands in the way of the blood war spreading further into the material plane and destroying civilization as a whole. In tense, fearful times such as this, only the actions of the world's remaining heroes who allowed the material plane to survive. The year is 825. The war continues. That's it. That's the basic premise. In a universe where the Blood War is somehow even more intense than normal, the Blood War has reached the material plane and now risks consuming the entirety of Lorania in endless war. What are the adventures doing about it? We'll get to that soon. For now, let me discuss the regions of Lorania, and then finally get to some of the most important locations within the setting. The Warring Wastes, represented on the map by the Grey, is the area in Lorania currently dedicated to the Blood War. Roaming bands of devils and demons have destroyed much of what existed before. The most fighting has occurred in the ruins of Anka, the city that was created around the Material Anchor, but much fighting has occurred elsewhere. The Blood War has destroyed several major strongholds, including Tricena, the Elven Capital, and Steel Cluster, a tightly knit group of Dwarven strongholds. The Line is the area represented by the light brown east of the Warring Wastes. This area is where Bastia, Tanir, and Amin defend the rest of the world from the spread of the Wastes. Resources and reinforcements are constantly being sent to keep these strongholds standing. Northern Rava is the name given to the area in green all the way down to the city of Fion. Primarily temperate and forested, this area is most at risk of falling if the line doesn't hold. This region contains Mount Koro, the world's largest mountain, which is also the location of Fire Fountain, the ancestral home of the dwarves. Southern Rava is also green, starting at Fion and going downwards. More heavily forested than Northern Rava, this area is noteworthy for containing Aurora, the world's largest still standing city. Remember our roar, it's important. The Sandland is represented by the orange part of the world to the northeast. It is the current stronghold of the Goblinoids. It was conquered by the Hobgoblins in 512 at a time when the Hobgoblin race's hold on their land was waning. The conquering Hobgoblins' culture has since melded with the culture of the native inhabitants, creating a cultural environment unlike any other on Lorania. The city of Spester has been instrumental in maintaining a fresh supply of soldiers to defend the line. The wild bogs are the dark green parts and are exactly what they sound like. Even wilder than southern Rava, the wild bogs are home to various jungles and swamplands and all manner of dangerous creatures lurking within. It is also the location of the current elven capital. The Rushwind Tundra is white, duh. This area to the south is by far the coldest in Lorania. In it is Kamu, a settlement primarily populated by Goliaths. The tundra has various other denizens of the cold as well, such as yetis and frost giants. To the southwest below the Warring Wastes is an island covered in snowy forest. This island, called the Uncharted Isle, has yet to be fully explored or colonized, 
due to fear of its dangerous inhabitants, including white dragons. So, there you have it. Those are the regions of Lorania. Now let's move on to some of the most important places on Lorania that the adventurers can and might visit. The starting location of the adventure is Aurora, established in 198. It's a massive city with a little bit of everything and acts as the world's current trading hub. It is a monarchy run primarily by King Nathaniel and Queen Roselia, with her daughter Rachel being heir to the throne. The party is employed by the city's government to deal with domestic and international issues that could interfere with the war effort. This means that they'll be traveling from place to place, making sure the war effort doesn't grind to a screeching halt. As you can imagine, this makes missions, especially the more important ones, very high stakes. Spester was established in 305 and now acts as the capital of the Goblinoids. Known for having some of the world's best soldiers, this city is run very militaristically, with martial law being in effect at all times. Uniquely, crime is mainly addressed through the actions of respected and highly trained officers, referred to as sheriffs, that each act according to their own interpretation of the law. Despite this being a highly divisive and anarchic system of justice, the sheriffs are known for being very good at their jobs. Yes, you heard that right. Spester is a military dictatorship enforced by cowboy cops. Ciara is the current elven capital. Established in 233 and populated by both high elves and wood elves, as well as plenty of half elves. The government is run by an elite council, some members of which had escaped the destruction of Tricena that wished to bring Ciara to glory and splendor. Comparable to that of Tricena, their contribution to the war effort fluctuates widely depending on the ruling of the council. Fire Fountain, as I said before, is the capital of the dwarves. This stronghold produces master quality weapons and armor, and dwarven warriors are often being seen sent to the line. Though they are happy to keep the fiends at bay, the dwarves also spend much of their resources on defensive systems for the stronghold in case the line fails to hold. Fire Fountain is run by a king and queen who are currently very hands-off when it comes to political affairs. Commu is a group of noble savages that highly support and encourage their supposedly classless living. They've existed since at least the 700s and have thus far not interacted with the larger world much. I hope that that description explains why their home region is the Rushwin Tundra. Fion is a representative democracy established in 471 and is populated mostly by humans with very few other races living within the city's walls. The city's lumber industry, among other things, provides large amounts of raw building materials for the line, as well as allied kingdoms, making good relations with Fion a high priority for neighboring cities, and everyone for that matter. Para is a meritocracy of gnomes, halflings, and similar races that was first established as a group of villages in 385 before making a spontaneous expansion in the early 600s. The city is full of expert craftsmen and acts as a great hotspot for new inventions and ideas. This makes the city a great source of mechanical knowledge. It's the closest Lorania gets to the Eberron setting. The strongholds of the line are what protect the rest of the world from the Blood War. Any devils or demons that come close are driven away at any cost. Holy spells and magic weapons are especially useful here. Anka is the appropriately named city built around the material anchor near the beginning of history. The Blood War is most active here. Going here is only a good idea if one is suicidal, none who have stepped foot here have lived. Don't go here. And with that, the introduction is over. Thanks for watching, and I hope you'll enjoy listening to the group's escapades.